Greetings, Zimbabwe, Africa, and the world. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Titan Law. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today, I'm in conversation with Rubimbo Hope Masike, a Mbira player, a singer, a dancer, a poet, and an all-round artist. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, I love you. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Rubimbo Hop Masiki, what an amazing uh, song that was. Thank you, thank you so beautiful. much. Beautiful. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Tell me about your relationship with that instrument. Mm. My relationship with Mbira yes. is deep and right. deeply rooted and beautiful. And Tarambo, Kweshana, Kweshana, Kudara. Right. Chimbo, Jumbisana, Jugunu, and stuff like that. Yeah. But now we're cool. Um, and I love the Mbira because um, when I started learning it, the first person to teach me was asking us, why are you learning Mbira? And um, big thing then I said, to make money. Um, but I said, to make money with something that actually represents me. Mm -hmm. So I love Mbira because of that. The instrument represents our roots, represents who we are as Zimbabweans. Uh, so no matter what you then do with it, like now I played a jazz standard. Mm -hmm. I was actually reading from the book. But because I'm playing it on Mbira, already I'm fully reading. How long have you been doing this how, how long did it take yeah how long did it take for you to learn it to, to learn to play it and how long have you been playing it uh, i wouldn't remember exactly how long mm. it took me to learn it but um uh it was one of the instruments i learned fastest um which perhaps also explains why then we fell in love with each other um but i started playing bira just before finishing my fine art studies how i met mbira mm -hmm. right. reverend sakambira wasn't really the kind of thing you'd find at home and then um, when i went to do fine art kuharari polytechnic um, within our studies, we would uh, do a subject that covered the material culture of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So uh, through that subject, we, there's a day, there's a, a time we were focusing on Mbira. So we did the history of Mbira and I was only seeing it from the book. I liked it already from then. And then, uh, incidentally also, one of our lecturers' friend, I wear Chiriza Mbira every yeah. time. So I would go up the corridor, he goes to see his friend, he's playing Mbira again. So we, we started getting used to that sound and boy, was it beautiful. So one day we asked him to teach us and he was like, okay, I'll teach you, just buy the Mbiras. But the next time he came, he actually brought us the Mbiras. Um, so uh, that was my first introduction to Mbira. Uh, but Pandaga paid a fine art kupoli. I went to Zimbabwe College of Music and yeah. then I started doing music properly. And the program at Zimbabwe College of Music, the degree program that I was doing, uh, in Otangane, obviously an NC slash diploma, which had a very serious bias towards ethnomusicology and which had a very serious bias towards Zimbabwean music. So we were doing a lot of Zimbabwean traditional music, uh, different types of mbira. Mbira zewe zimunjari, nyunga nyunga, marimba, uh, African drums, anomba kumba, shinyambera, all of that. 
at the same time, she done a piano and guitar, but there was a very strong bias towards those. Mm. So Hope, did you deliberately go into music? Did you choose to do this or you stumbled into it? Some people say, you know, they stumble into careers, they stumble into things. How did it happen? I want to Mbiracho is the one that called them. Okay. <laughs> um, for me, I chose, but at the same time, I would also say it kind of chose me. Mm. Uh, the, the same uh, cliche type of story. But when I was growing up in my family, um, everyone had a great voice. They still do. Mm. Everyone has a great voice at home. I'm not even the best voice at home. So would sing a lot. So our music had always been there. Um, and in, in, in class also, when we did art subjects and all that, I was always the best. So it was always very evident that I was gifted uh, artistic mm. things. Um, but I chose it as my professional career. Um, yeah, it, it just kind of fell into natural place also mm. as my life went. And yeah, then at, at some point, eventually I chose it by going to school to do a home degree. Yeah, music, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a deliberate choice. Yeah. So, so let's go back to where were you born? Where did you do your um, uh, formative education? Mm. Yeah. Right. Like I, I was born in Highfield, um, Highfield Poly Clinic. Um, a few steps from our house. And then I grew up in Highfield for um, most of my, my childhood. At some point, we lived in Bulawayo at Kami Prison. Um, but most of the times, I grew up in Highfield. I did my in mm -hmm. Highfield, went to busy primary school in Highfield, and then Dagumore also in Bulawayo when we moved a bit there. From there, I, w I did my, my O level at Daniko in right. um, Mutari Road. And then I went to Mabrin Girls High for my A levels. And then I went to Harare Polytechnic for fine art. And then I went to Zimbabwe College of Music for uh, the music. And then now I'm at Alliance Francaise for French. And did I tell you, mm -hmm. I'm also, <laughs> I'm, also oh, I'm getting excited about this. I'm, I'm, I'm also doing um, uh, studies in international diplomacy. Um, the Institute of uh, Diplomacy. That's interesting. We will get to, 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 to that. Where did the influence come from? Was it your mom? Or was it your dad? Uh, did the home influence your choice of music? Yeah, I was one of the, I think, quite common family um, setups. Yoguti Maneru, you would sing and pray together. Um, so solid, solid AFM. So every evening you're singing my hymns uh, from the hymn book, the AFM, uh, and then you sing and you pray every evening. So already that was natural grooming for me. And Mbamedu were a big family, so there was a lot of harmony. And then my mom was in the church choir also. She used to go with me on Tuesday evenings. Beautiful voices, I remember them so much. I have solid memories of. There was a girl called Kudzai, amazing soprano. I remember that choir so right. much. So all of that grooming, I guess, uh, it mightn't have been deliberate to say we're grooming a musician here, but um, it, it, it was my initial it fell grooming. Your way. Yeah. And uh, was it mom or on her own, dad? Was, did dad have an influence as far as that is concerned in terms of music? Um, just kuimba kumbai go yeah. wataita as a family. Anybody else that sings in the family apart from you? Professionally, no. Mm. I'm the only one who sings professionally. But every time we meet, we all sing. So your uh, mentor, and uh, you call him your other father, Ray Mawerere, yeah. says that uh, you are a singer, you are a dancer, you are a graphic designer, and that art in all its forms runs through your veins. What do you think you are? That's a pretty singer, accurate. A dancer? <laughs> what, what are you? I am art through and through. Mm -hmm. Talk um, to me about that. And because my initial studies were in fine art, uh, fine art, first year you're doing applied art and design, basics of everything. You're doing graphic design, drawing, painting, sculpting, uh, history of art, and then you specialize later. So because of that, I can, in fact, do all of those things. Do not also touch the score any time. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to graphic designing, as long as I have time, I actually like doing it myself. Uh, and those are because of time uh, and sometimes just wanting um, different uh, designs, different energy from someone else. But there's um, many artistic things that I can do because I was taught or because uh, I, was just born, I was just born an yeah. artist there. Yeah. So he, he's pretty accurate in his description of who I am. I, I, I am art throughout. 
And uh, you've had a, a number of accolades. I mean, you have uh, been um, awarded the NAMO Award, mm -hmm. uh, the Cora Awards, and there's quite a number of other awards that have come your way. Yeah. But you've just started. What does, do this mean to you? Awards, um, well, just like the, the word says, it's, it's like an award, a, a reward. Um, mm -hmm. And it's always um, great to get um, these awards, especially from home. It means a lot. You need um, what you're doing uh, is also adding value to other people's lives. So they are always wonderful to have every now and then. Although the last couple of years, I, have, I haven't really focused on them. <laughs> um, because also the way I work is, is in seasons. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the plowing season, I kind of uh, Talk overlook. to me about the season. Yeah. And um, I find it's more fruitful to work in seasons. Um, so for instance, uh, right now I have several books that are lined up to be released because I worked on them a long time ago. And it's the same with music. There was a time that um, I just paid a lot of money to Studio Kwamono. And then I said every first week of every month I'll be coming and then I just experiment. So I have so many songs also. Tagango line were up waiting to be released. So I was in that season of plowing. Now we are in another season. And then there'll come a season of working on the reaping um, mm -hmm. uh, process here. Yeah. So I, I like that structure of working in seasons. It helps with focus. Um, That's a lot of discipline. Hmm, thank you. Where does it come from? <laughs> where, the, where does the discipline come from? Oh, it's, it's daily work, I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, being disciplined is daily work. For, for me, it didn't come as naturally as that, unfortunately. I had to teach myself that. And I still work on myself with, with that. Um, that's the other reason I have mentors, people who also are there to panel beat you every time to get you uh, focused and disciplined properly. Yeah. But it's an, it's an everyday job. Yeah. How important are mentors in your life? Mentors are very important because, um, I mean, we are all on this earth to do, uh, we don't know how many years God has given us, but uh, we are going to be on earth for those years anyway because uh, there is, you can decide how you're going to use your time here on earth. And one of the things that makes your time on earth more fruitful is having people who look after you, who guide you, people who have been there who will help uh, propel things for you so that you don't make the same mistakes, but instead you, have, you go to certain places faster. Uh, so mentors are very important. And also because I'm an artist, I'm very sensitive when it comes to my opinions and things like that. If you don't have someone else whom you listen to who says no, and you listen to them, that can be a big problem. Hmm. So sometimes we have fantastic ideas and all, but you need other people whom you throw the same ideas to and then they tell you, yes, this works, no, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think mentors are very important. You're following uh, after the footsteps of uh, big uh, giants, mm -hmm. um, Stella Chueshe, mm -hmm. uh, Chioniso Marairi. Mm -hmm. How influential have these been to you and how different are you from them? Mm -hmm. Lovely question. Uh, to start with, uh, the two names you have mentioned are proper, proper legendary stuff. And um, I do hope as a country uh, we, we give them enough praise for Vasat Vafa. And then we, uh, we praise them. We are still at you. Mm. She's amazing. I love just sitting down with her and talking, chatting with her. Satatumbotara Swimbira or anything, Heshona alone, you'd be just like. <laughs> 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 and if you don't follow properly, because she, she speaks in proper, proper deep shona and the, the metaphorical things she says in, in the... So I love spending time with her. And uh, it's unfortunate I, d I and we didn't get much more time with Chiwoni Somarai. Mm. But the two of them have done exceptional work for Mbira and for the, let's just say, the creative industries here in Zimbabwe and for women in arts. Um, in Nini Pandaka Tanga Woodies Mbira, the figure who was there in music, especially Kumbira, was just Chiwoniso. Mm. And um, Chiwoniso was warm and welcoming. She was one of the first musicians I spoke to, in fact. Back then I was doing fashion designing, the Chiriku, it's a fine art, Polytechnic. That's the first time. You've I been did. all over the place. <laughs> if it's art, I'm there. Right. <laughs> um, she was very warm and welcoming. And um, what I, I, how they influenced me to start with is, 
Um, many people underestimate the value of, they call it representation. As long as something has never been there on earth, or it's been there but you've never seen it, sometimes you cannot dream of it at all because mm. you've never seen it, which is why they say exposure is That's important. Powerful, that. Yeah. So if you've never ever seen it, it's not even within your scope of dreams. But you haven't gone to the And made it possible. I can be a musician too. I mean, I'm talking about mbira and instrument. So the fact that they took it and they went beyond Zimbabwe with it and then they became icons of the instrument and leading bands. They paved the way for many, many of us. And I don't know how our industry would have progressed if we hadn't had them also paving the way for us. Panana, Susan, Mapumo, Vesavari, Moimo, as well, but I'll mention Vigumbir. So they were very, very, um, in my career personally, also, Chuoniso was very, very influential. When I started, I saw my looks, I saw my nose ring. I don't Tell know. Tell me, uh, do you think, are you, are you having the same influence on the people that are growing up right now watching you? Are you getting that sense that's what's happening? I do hope so. I won't blow my own trumpet here, but I, mean, I do hope, I certainly hope that's what I'm doing. I make efforts to, so I have, um, I have this program that I launched last year and I'll be starting the, so it's kind of intake based mm -hmm. and I have seven girls that I work with throughout a year and I try to expose them to what I am exposed to as well. So the great friends that I have, I try to introduce them to, to those seven girls. You open doors for them. Yeah, I try to do that. And I try to, like I was saying, just to expose them to a whole lot of things. Uh, I have friends who are in solar, with solar farms. I try to, we go and we see just exposure for them and just to be there for them if they have any questions and help they would need from so me. So you say you've got this program, how do people get into, into the program? I, I advertise when it's time you for advertise. it. Yeah, so you're, my you're social not media yet to advertise. It's coming soon, in fact. Yeah. Okay, so they ought to look out yes, if yes. they want to benefit from you. Yes, and this year we're calling it the seven of us. The other thing is also the seven of them, I try to make them seven good friends in business and in growing each other. A mentor doesn't only always have to be someone older than you. It can be even same same age. Reverse mentoring? And yes, yeah. exactly. So I hope through that I am also having positive influence on these young girls. But beyond that, I believe that when you answer to your calling, already already you are preaching a lot of positivity into other people's lives because it's your calling. When you step into your calling, Pane message winayo iwewe ya kangu mirira iwe which is if you step into it already, I believe you're already adding a lot of positive influence into people's lives. So um I try to do my work thoroughly. I try to um the reason I don't release a song every month is because I really try to have perfect, perfect quality and I try to give people what I believe is coming deep down from my heart, not influenced by trends, but what I believe is my calling. And through doing that I hope for sure I am speaking to many souls and improving their lives. You are speaking to many souls. You have released three albums right yes. now. Uh, hope in 2009, mm -hmm. um, uh, Love and Chocolate. Love is very central to, this, to a lot of things that you do yes. in 2012. And the exorcism of uh, a spin star in yes. 2019. Yes. Do you have any favorite so far? <laughs> It's I like asking a parent which one of which of your parents hey, is the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> they are all very special right. because all of them came at a time where they were they were timely in that mm. time. Mm. Uh, my very first album, Hope, uh, we did it Chichiri Amateurs. We were still in school, in music school. And there's a lot of purity in it. I, I love it because of that. And for me, it was a dive into an industry I didn't know about. But it's exactly that same album that then opened many doors for me. So it's special in that way. Mm -hmm. Mbira, Love and Chocolate is exactly mm -hmm. what the title said. I tried to mix Mbira, our roots, uh, with chocolate, mm -hmm. things that we get from other cultures, but that are still sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. And then with Love, mm -hmm. I tried to bring all of that into one mashup, and then the album came out. The Exorcism of a Spin Star is very, very special to me also because it's speaking into um, 
what I have been observing in my life and with my peers around me, I tried to talk to a particular woman on that album and to uh, the rest of society with regards to that particular woman, the spinster, of mm. course. And it's very special to me because of that. So all three are very special. I mm. cannot pick one and say, oh, this one is mine. Tell me about the, the creativity, the inspiration yes. for putting together these songs. You, you say you don't follow trends. It, where does it come to. from? Where does it come from? Speak to us about the, the, your, 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 your creative process. Mm. I try to, but mm. uh, trends are trends. Trends are very... Um, in, influential. Yeah, and attractive also. So I try to, but mm, yeah. Um, so what I try to respect in my process is, like I mentioned before, looking for what's inside me. Um, so the album that I'm now working on, my fourth album. The fourth album, one, yeah. Yes. That one, I was very deliberate uh, about the musicality of it. So I sat down to write, to write a certain type of music. Uh, and when we started uh, this album, the working title was highly irregular. The album was going to be called that, but I think that's going to change. And why highly irregular? Because for this album, I looked at Mbira and I thought, um, you know how uh, the Bible says abundant, there's nothing new on this. Earth. Of course. But I looked at Mbira and I was looking for something fresh that I can do with it. Can you get 15 keys? How much more can you do with it? And one of the things that came to mind was I love irregular times, like uh, take five. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Um, so I thought I would love to do irregular music on Mbira. We also don't have it in our traditional music. So I wanted to experiment with this, bringing the, the world of Mbira to this world of highly irregular musics, which are predominantly jazzy. So I went into studio with that deliberate focus. And the first days I went into studio, I had absolutely no song. I was starting from scratch to create. Uh, and then when it came to writing the, the music for the lyrics for the music, I also had a deliberate focus. And then sometimes, I am just sitting here with you, Trevor. Mm -hmm. You are talking to someone. There, something just comes into my mind. I guess those are just. And then you say that's a, that's a song. That's right a song, there. and yeah. thank God, Mazwano, we phone so immediately record it. Sometimes I dream of melodies, and then I wake up and record it. When I wake up in the morning, I listen. It makes absolutely no sense, <laughs> but sometimes it's a fantastic melody. Yeah. So. The process starts from anywhere. It can start from the instrument oh, also. Oh. It can start from the lyrics. It can start from seeing something happening in society and then I decide this needs to be addressed. When is the fourth album, album coming out? I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Once Rai, but then we can start planning for it. Okay, uh, no, yeah. no, no forecasts or anything before the end of the year, half year? Um, my hope, my, my absolute dream would be to have it this year, this year. in September. Oh, we look to forward to that. Ready. We look yeah. forward to that. I'm absolutely enjoying your music. Talk Thank to you. me. Talk to me about collaborations. Yes. Uh, you're doing quite a number of collaborations. Mm -hmm. What goes into deciding who you collaborate with? And, and uh, yeah. That's a tough one, huh? Uh, I would say I'd love to collaborate with everyone, uh, but it's impossible, of course, because um, my artistic philosophy also directs me in who I work with right. or how I work with who. Um, so, it, I mean, that's just what happens with, mm. I think every artist does that. Uh, you do not collaborate with everyone. You cannot collaborate with everyone, but you look for someone with whom uh, you have the correct chemistry, whether musically or uh, beyond music. Um, so when someone gets in touch with me and they say they would like to collaborate with me, obviously me and my team or my whoever is advising me at the time would like to listen to what you do. Um, one beautiful thing about collaborations is I believe any kinds of music can be brought together and create something great, any, any kinds mm. of music. Mm. Um, but for me, then I look for uh, music that feeds into my, my, my philosophy when it comes to music. I love art, I love artistic things, and obviously I'm biased towards mbira and jazz. Um, um, but I also look at your profile mm. and I look at your brand. I've always been so afraid of brand contamination. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful with that. Uh, but my, the main thing that determines... Well, you've created me, the brand. You've invested so much in a brand. I what use say, is it to then go out and have it contaminated? And have it contaminated, yeah. yeah but uh, 
some people in media will tell you there is never brand contamination. You know how they say there's never bad news mm. also. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's never bad publicity. And you know, the main thing that determines for me is uh, the artistic uh, rootings of, of someone's music. I love the poetry in your music. Yes. And I'm absolutely excited that you've finally decided to put your poetry into, into a, a book. book. <laughs> and uh, 36 uh, poems. Yes. Uh, and you've called it um, Ask Me Again, which you launched in, uh, you know, last month. In, yes, in, 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 on, the, on the 7th of February. Talk to me about this book. Um, I love this book. You love this book. <laughs> shall, shall we start by you reading what is my favorite uh, uh, yes. poem? Yes, what would you like me to uh, read? Please read uh, uh, Liggs. No, 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 no. Read for me. They are all paid for. <laughs> Good choice. Okay, I'll read for you. They are all paid for. We see mistresses of the night waiting at the roadsides for the starved. The starved then comes and pays money and money. Then the no longer starved goes back to his real life. Sex, businesswoman, concubine, wife, and another one waits on the bed for a secret lover. So secret in their phone is titled, Jimmy the Plumber. A hungry plumber comes and pays to rent and hair and shoes. Then the no longer hungry plumber goes back to his real life. Sex businesswoman, concubine, wife, Yet another one waits in a kitchen for hers, a husband who paid cows and groceries and money and money. At least she is called by his and his children's names. Sex, businesswoman, concubine, wife, just different homes, just different names and different prices. Wow. <laughs> So creative, so Thank powerful. You. Lots of messages in there. Mm. What made you put this uh, amazing book together? So the story of how I ended up with so many poems in my life was, um, in fact, um, I would call it, a, it's one of those uh, turning lemons into lemonade type of stories. So there was a time in my career when um, I used to have a fantastic booking, booking manager and all. And we worked together for quite a bit and it was great, business was picking up big time. But then we had a fallout. And when that happened, uh, the, the entire business structure just crumbled down. So I crumbled down with it and um, I had to take some time out. So I went back to my family home and because there's, in fact, there was no one at, at home that time. So I had the entire house to myself. It was very quiet. I didn't have many gigs in that time. So I started reading a lot, something I hadn't had time to do for a long time. Mm. And through reading a lot and having a lot of peace and quiet, then I started writing a lot. I was just reading a lot and writing a lot and reading and writing a lot. Before I knew it, I had a million poems in Shona and in English. So at some point I thought I might have, I, I might be onto something here. I took the poems, I asked Memo Richire, a renowned poet, I asked him if he could help me, if he could just go through them and tell me if, if I had struck gold or something. <laughs> so I gave him the poems, he read them, and then uh, the next time I saw him, he was like, what are you waiting for? So go for it. They, th that's how the book came to life. So Memo Richire edited, and then we had to compress them into a book. We couldn't have all of the poems mm -hmm. in one book. Uh, so that's how this it's, book It's came a brave to life. piece of work. What has been the responses from the public? I mean, Zimbabwe is very conservative. It's very. And you, have, you are daring. <laughs> Thank you. What's been the response um, like? The response uh, at the album launch, uh, at the book launch, I'm, I'm used to album launches. At the book launch, um, after my presentation, we had a bit of a question and answer. Uh, and um, I had a gentleman who seemed particularly angry at me and thought, <laughs> <laughs> and thought I had just been so unfair in, in my writing. Um, I had to make a disclaimer that once I know about men a bit more, I'll write a book that also focuses on men. <laughs> so some men feel attacked naturally, but it's not an attack on men. I'm mm. talking about women. I just took mm. women issues. Uh, like the other poem, um, One Berg Per Woman. Mm. It's talking about fibroids. Mm. Um, I I'm just talking about women issues and uh, how women interpret some of the things. And 
I, this book, much as it talks about women and issues around them, I would actually say it's written for men mm. who would like to understand women more. This book is not judging any so man this, at all. So this man who was angry with you, yes. was he offended? Uh, what was his problem? Uh, I, I, I guess he was offended by some of, some of the poems. Uh, and one of his main comments was that um, something like, um, I didn't write anything positive about men in the book. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was quite correct because I have some pretty, pretty sensual poems there that are talking about men also, mm -hmm. that lovely dark melanin and all that. Um, yeah, but anyway, there's been the, the greater number of people are excited about the poems. Mm -hmm. And like you say, many of them also think it took guts to uh, publish something like this. And a lot of women also have come to me. Are there some who are saying you, there's stuff that you shouldn't have said? Because you actually say that uh, uh, you, uh, you're speaking about things that people don't usually talk about. Yeah. Things that we're afraid to talk about. Um, are, are there people coming to you and saying, why did you say A, B, C, D? No one has, no, no really? one has really said you shouldn't have said something. No, no one has said that. Um, yeah, no one has said that. The greater part of, of the comments has been real great compliments. And um, I think for people who are open-minded or people who would love to open their minds, mm -hmm. it's a great read. It's just taking people deeper into certain it's issues. It's a great read. I found it very creative. I found it very deep. So, uh, you know, congratulations uh, thank for, you. For, for the... You are into acting. Yes. Um, and you've been cast in a number of roles. Are we going to see you get into that more and more? Yes, in fact. Um, so like I said, I, I move in seasons. And we've started this season of uh, writing. And then uh, incidentally, I received an, an email from Canada. So there's a lady called Shantae Grant. She's a poet and a playwright. Amazing. Hugely celebrated in um, Nova Scotia. She Halifax. sends me, mm. yeah, in Halifax. So she sends me an email and she's talking about a one woman show she would like to do and she wanted me to be the one woman. And then she's like, because um, she went you to. You go, gal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she went to my YouTube and then uh, she watched. So there's one uh, clip I posted on my YouTube channel where I'm talking about the little bit of acting that I did and how I loved it and how it felt to act and how I'd love to do more acting. So she's like, she watched all of that and she thought I was the perfect fit for what she wanted to do. So next thing, I was in Canada uh, half of this February, freezing, but also working on a great, great project. So we were doing foundational work for this uh, one woman play. We were working in close collaboration with a director called Anthony Black from a theatre company called 2B. So this is a one woman show, mm -hmm. which means I'm doing You're all the acting. You're going to be the woman. I'm going to be that woman. Can you imagine? Wow. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. So in fact, the, the whole foundational work started from this book. Uh, so it inspired our character, the crafting of the character and the themes around which we will discuss in the play. Yeah. So I spent half of February mm. working on that. I did a bit of acting and I was being directed by a great guy who was giving me a lot of coaching uh, sessions, teaching me different things about theatre. So I can most certainly, most assuredly answer you and say, yes, there's going to be a lot of acting coming. Oh, wow. We look forward to that. We yeah. Look forward. Um, so uh, Hollywood Calling or uh, the Nigerian uh, film scene? <laughs> The Zimbabwean scene. Zimbabwean we scene. are building Zimbabwe well, I here. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well done for that. Thank tell, you. tell me, I mean, uh, it, 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 what's been your biggest challenge career wise? What's been your biggest challenge? Hmm. Seeing as I don't like focusing on those, um, it might take me a minute to figure out um, what to tell you there. But um, I mean, Zimbabwe is Zimbabwe. Mm. Whatever industry you're in, uh, so we, you, you don't like focusing on challenges? No. Nah. Okay. I identify them and then I try to work um, around, them. around them, but by focusing on my strengths and the things that I know I've got right. Well, that's even more important than focusing on challenges, perhaps. Especially if it's, you don't have an interesting a, cha a strategy, isn't it? Ah, it is. Especially if you, if you are not the owner of, uh, if you're not on the driving seat of eradicating those challenges, then you might as well not focus on them too much. So, like, the biggest challenge, I would say, has been the fact that um, we are all functioning in an economy that's been staggering for the longest time. 
and much as we remain hopeful that the economy will pick up and all, it means all this time we are all working under not the most favorable conditions. I'll tell you. So mm. one of the biggest collaborations I am part of, it's been long standing since 2011, is a trans-global collaborative called uh, Monosuezi. Mm. Monosuezi, there's Mozambique, Norway, Sweden, and yeah. Zimbabwe. Yeah. The way this band works, the way the work I was doing in Canada works, the way a lot of work that I do outside the country works is such that you are funded properly by your governments, by different ministries that, uh, that are represented in your product. So for instance, with Monosuez, it also kind of falls under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because there are four countries that are together blended. So you have, your, your job as an artist is to think about interesting ideas. In order to focus on? Uh, not to focus on, on where you're going to get the money. Where you get the money is applying for the money, but using your savings to feed the, that same engine, that it, it's very, very difficult. And it takes, it's beyond discipline that's needed. It, it takes also being very strong in your calling and a lot of sacrifices. You, you want your event to be absolutely amazing. You cannot depend 100% on a Zimbabwean sponsorship. You can never, ever do that. So if the sponsorship comes, great, but you always must have plan B of not getting it, which means what? You're using your money. Uh, so it brings a lot of different types of challenges. Even keeping a band together becomes challenging because you understand your band members are going to do other jobs. They need to do other jobs. There's more musicians being um, uh, coming from different uh, music schools, but the market hasn't expanded yet. It's the same market. If anything, it's been shrinking. So all of those create different types of um, other challenges, but the main thing being that the economy in which we are all working is not the most favorable. There's a whole lot of things that still need to, mm. to, be, to be made better. And marketing, is marketing a challenge? Um, has technology uh, enhanced, uh, helped you in any, in any way? Thank the Lord for technology, because now you can take a great part of your marketing, you can take it in your own hands. Mm. You can create a team around you that focuses on your, on your social media presence, mm. and you can make money out of, uh, we call it social capital? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can make great money out of it. We have people who don't have an actual product you can touch, mm -hmm. but they are just such influencers out there, so much that they get a lot of endorsements. So social media has helped a lot. Thank the Lord for technology in that mm -hmm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th these days you don't only depend on Kunyor uh, Wampepa and Kuita my interviews on radio and TV. Those are absolutely great. They remain the main thing that pushes you. Mm. But you also have other things you can do on your own personal level to market your, your brand. Mm. Yeah. Um, ha have you failed at all? I mean, Oh, failure is part of success. Really? I, Talk to uh, me uh, about uh, your failures. This reminds me of one of my poems, yeah. also, which talks about uh, a success without any failures, without any pain that has never happened on earth. Um, Wow. Uh, so you want me to tell you about some of yeah, my failures? Yes, but there's lots of lessons that, like you're saying, people get from, from, from other people's failures. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, well, what comes to mind very quickly is this, this book, the fact that it came from a, a position of failure. It came from a p position of being down, crumbled, and, and uh, not working, in fact. I, the reason I was home was because I wasn't gigging a lot. But out of that, came the book. So the, the whole concept of turning lemons into lemonade. I have failed. I have mm. failed. I, um, I don't know how many managers I've tried in my career. <laughs> what has failure taught you? What has it taught you? Uh, failure has taught me that it's part of the process. It's going to happen. You don't stop because you failed. As, as you walk, you, a lot of things can, even, but it doesn't mean you stop. Things happen that bring you down, you slow down, whatever, but never ever stop. Failure is part of it. Just make sure you, you, uh, you take stock later and find out what, what caused it and, all, and try to make sure it doesn't happen again. But it's, yeah, it's part of the, the process. If you're never ever failing, ooh, you're not on planet Earth. I don't know where you are in Mars or somewhere. <laughs> failure is part of it. And uh, I mean, Mbira is, is what is, is, is your passion as far as music. What other musical genres do you, do you, do you, lo do you love apart, apart from Mbira? I've already mentioned jazz. Mm. I'm, mm. I'm totally in love with jazz. And um, 
The, the other thing that happened is when we were in music school, we were encouraged, forced even, to listen to everything. So because of that, I, I have a huge appreciation of just about everything, as long as it's well made. Um, and uh, all the other music styles move in seasons. Yeah. So if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling down, there's a particular type of music that I'll play. I like dance hall. Mm. Not just Zim dance hall, dance hall, mm. dance hall, dance hall, then I dance. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't go to any gym. I do it at home. I dance. I normally you have dance to dance on your own. On my own, I have to have big headphones so that I don't make noise for people. And then I listen to dance or and I dance. Um, and then when I'm driving or when I'm working, I love listening to classical music, the Mozarts and the Beethovens. I listen to anything. But yeah, the the ones that come on top, Mbira, uh, jazz, and then all else follows. So they, there's going to be young people watching you right now. Mm -hmm. And, and saying, wow, she has failed, she has embraced failure because she, she sees lessons from failure. Yeah. What message would you have for those young people that are struggling to, 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 to crack doors open in business and careers and so forth, mm -hmm. given the journey that you've had? What message do you have? Well, my current message to the young and the old and the elderly, my current message mostly directed to Zimbabwe is that um, if you're Christian, the Bible says uh, God will not give you trials that he knows you cannot handle. I don't phrase that properly. It's said in better, it's, it's there's better vocabularies, yes. but um, yeah. Um, and then also the fact that you have one life, so whatever is happening in your life, uh, whether you're facing challenges because you feel it's happening because you're female, if you were male, it wouldn't be happening. Just remember, Maraga will create all female for a reason. And he says he didn't do it. He knows you. And also remember, you have one life on this earth. Whether in Zimbabwe or in so you have to make it work, full stop. Either you make it work or you just watch your life go by. Make it work. And the, how you make it work is among so failure is going to be there. Keep going, keep going. And if you keep going, you keep getting better at going. So the going gets um, easier in the going because you're used to it. You keep going, you keep going. A failure comes, something comes and p puts you down, but you keep going. Make it work. And then uh, to my bits of advice that I would give, uh, they say your network is your net worth. So be careful who you are hanging around right now. And they also say, your top five people that you hang out with tell us who you are. So be very, very careful and be very intentional about who you spend time to. You are allowed to be um, stingy with your time. It's spending your time much better than uh, going out with certain people and doing absolutely nothing. And then I drink, but even when I drink, I want great company, good conversation. You know, mm. That's a good utilization of time. So be careful who you have around and make sure your network is worthy of your time. Because for sure, your network is your net worth. Later on, it, as it grows, you see that it's the people you know that get you further than what you know on its own. So yeah, keep going. Your network is your net worth. Be careful who you have around you. What about somebody who then says, oh, but she's saying that because she's made it. Well, define made it. I don't consider myself as having made it. Ooh, I got a lot of work to do. Wow. Made it? <laughs> no, I haven't made it at all. And I, everything that I'm preaching, I also preach to myself every day. I have to remind myself to keep going. I have to remind myself, this is time wasted. What are you doing? Go home and read or something. Uh, I remind myself of exactly the same things because I haven't made it. You make it when and, you're... And, and I hear a lot of speech, spirituality mm -hmm. and the role of God in your life. Yes. Talk to me about that. God is God, our creator. If we go to Shona Msikawanu, Ngarimpazo, Sesamatenga, Ngarimponesi, God is... God has been my everything in many ways. And I don't talk about God in a religious manner. And sometimes not even in a Christian manner, but I recognize him for being um, the one who controls my life and the one who gives me the power to control my life also. It's his yes that gives a yes in my life mm -hmm. and his no that gives a no in my life. So yeah, I look at God as um, 
the all enabling power. Um, and every day I also try to work on my relationship with him. I don't want it to be um, sugar coated with, like I was saying, with religion or even with Christianity. I am an artist, I question many things. Mm -hmm. And many Christians get uncomfortable with some of my questioning and then it's immediately labeled anti-Christian. Mm -hmm. But uh, questioning is good also. Um, why then I say God is the all-encompassing, all the, he's the, the almighty. Then I take my questions to him. He treats me better than other people when you ask them these questions. <laughs> but um, So that's what God is in my life. Um, I'm not preaching a God that um, when book or anything, I'll tell you it's, it's not easy. You talk to God and mm. his voice is not as recognizable as yours. When you reply, I hear that you have replied because your voice is there, it's out there. God is somewhere out there and sometimes you pray for something over and over. You don't know if you have heard from him or not. It's not an easy relationship. Um, but yeah, so it's a it's, personal relationship. Yeah, I take mine very, very personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you, you've written a book. Mm -hmm. S sounds like there's more books to come. Oh, there's plenty sounds where like that came there's from. there's more songs to come. Yes. Uh, I get the sense that uh, dancing is part of your relaxation. Yes. How, how else do you relax? Relaxing is very difficult for us artists because there's a thin line <laughs> between our job and then what we do as hobbies. Mm. Unless you do something that is very drastically different from art. Um, now with me, I like things like graphic designing and stuff, but they also fall under uh, under. But that myself. relaxes you, eh? Hey? It relaxes me. Right. I, it relaxes me. Sometimes I just work on something that's not meant for anything. I'm just working on something and then I just post it as artwork. Um, but dancing for sure. And then I love, my, my dad is retired, Sakavar Gumusha. I love the drive from Harare to the... Uh, to Road obviously. trip? Yeah, obviously I like I love going to see my father, of course, spending time with him and uh, to share more, more wisdom and uh, knowledge from him. But the drive, mm -hmm. so that was beautiful, yo. Uh, and in any season, rainy season, in winter, it's just a beautiful drive. Mm -hmm. So you go down Enterprise and then um, after Target, you turn, you turn left. Yeah, that, that stretch, Kusunubata mm Kwagua, -hmm. beautiful. Beautiful. So I enjoy that too. And um, what books are you reading or what books have you read that have um, had a huge impact on you? Uh, so when I was in Canada, because I was with a playwright at mm. Port, she's an author also. So she, we exchange a lot of um, books, a lot of authors that we know and respect. I read a lot of her work also because we were working together. And it has inspired uh, one of my next books, but I'll talk about that another time. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the books she gifted me with was um, For Colored Girls. I, I had watched the movie, the Tyler Perry right. movie. I'd never watched it in theaters, uh, and I'd never read the book. The way the book is written is beautiful. It's half, half poetry, half half script, half, it's, it was someone who just, it's like I'm going to download the Fungwa Zaga really, and it's amazing, I enjoyed it completely. Uh, so that's the book that I just finished. Um, after that, I don't know which one I'm jumping on to next. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Ruvimbo, hope must Um You are an inspiration to many. Thank and, you. And uh, we have no doubt that there's lots more to come from where this came from oh yes, oh, yes. where the three cds and the fourth that are coming mm. and we wish you nothing but the best thank in, you in your journey of uh, creativity thank and you so inspiring much. many people i particularly love the the, the, the your, your project uh, of mentoring the seven uh, the seven, the of, seven us. of us yes. that's that's beautiful I, I wish all of us could have seven of us around us oh yeah and oh, yeah. then our lives would be impactful so thank, thank you, you so much. much for finding time. You've just come back from Halifax, uh, yes. Canada. You've created the time to come and join us. Thank here. you for having we, me. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. Um, let's do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll get the fourth, fifth, sixth album and more poems. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Allow me to turn to our audience uh, back at home uh, in the diaspora all over the continent. Uh, thank you for watching these uh, very important conversations um, we invite you to click onto this subscribe button 
uh, so that you don't miss out on these uh, quality conversations. Remember, In Conversation with Trevor is a weekly show. So until next time, cheers.